Greetings, crafting friends. Welcome to my channel. This is Jo Marie Domino, and I have so much to show you all the things I found in the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to show you the things I brought home. I'm also going to show you some gorgeous, adorable, cute new Halloween napkins from Vippy's Designs www.vippies.com and as usual I have included a really fun DIY bonus project. Take a look at this. Look at the purples and the pinks. I used a brand new technique to get all of these colors kind of spooky, kind of funky, but I think it's something you're going to really love to try. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Tree has brought in some new dinnerware. It's not really fall, but I'm really liking that black and white, although that one design's making me a little dizzy. How cute are these little tea sets? I found them in the toy at the Dollar Tree, and I saw some projects um, that these were used in, and I don't see any reason why we can't take a little scraps of napkin and decoupage on these. They would make really cute ornaments, or you can add them into your small shadow box projects. This Dollar Tree had an enormous selection of Matchbox and Hot Wheel cars. This is a tea light holder, but it really looked like it was yelling at me. But of course, this is for a tea light and you could put a candle on top and the light will come through these holes. Very decoupageable because it is white. You can use your napkins on these, but of course you can always turn it around and make it into a ghost. I went to the Crafter Square aisle and I actually found a couple things I didn't already have, like this little tray. I thought, you know, what I was just talking about a little shadow box, that tea set would be the perfect size. I also found these flowers, they're burlap flowers. They would be a nice addition to some decoupage projects like jars or bottles. I was really thrilled to see that two of the Dollar Trees I go to have brought back these burlap canvases. I love working with them. I have an upcoming video. If you find them, please grab a couple and give them a coat of white paint. The easiest way to do that, it all needs is one coat, is to use a spray paint. I used Rust-Oleum's white chalky paint. It was so easy. Now, I found a couple of these really cute, you know, I don't know what to call these. I don't know. What would you call these? Anyway, I really like them. Um, that's the one with the heart, and this is another one, and they're made of like a bisque china, and I really love them. They're not just for Halloween, and I decided my bonus DIY in this video, I'm going to use these. They're so cute. <laughs> The Dollar Tree has so many different kinds of pumpkins. I took lots of pictures so you can see, but I love these pumpkins. They're foam pumpkins. They only used to come in orange, but now they come in black and white, so they're easy for decoupage projects. I am enjoying all the creativity of what people are making into pumpkins, like this little sign, and it's very substantial and heavy, so it's going to stand up on its own. Now, you can go ahead and change the words. The planking makes it very country farm, if that's what you like. It's also deep, so you can make it into a shadow box. Now, another thing I love are these little jugs. Now, these are also cute little signs, and I think that we can transform these as well. What would you do with them? I mean, they're thick. They're going to stand up on their own. You can tuck them in a shelf. You can put them in a centerpiece, but let's think about what can we do to transform them?
Dollar Tree has lots of football stuff this year. Now, I know this is very, very popular. I want to say almost coveted, this little um, rolling pin. Now, it comes in a couple different designs. And I have seen on different crafting pages how it's been transformed. And I like it. I don't really like the little bow. But I can see decoupaging the front and maybe instead of the bow, doing a little wrap of jute rope around the handles. Now, this acorn, also very substantial has a piece of what I would say faux leather riveted to the front and it stands up it's nice and substantial and heavy now the top part of the acorn is engraved so you can feel that it's a really nice piece but let's transform that what can we do with it this one I love I love the simplicity of it the welcome also riveted to the front of the pumpkin and it's substantial it stands up and I notice that that one actually has two pieces of wood glued together but I don't think that it's going to come apart now this is definitely something we could do a little bit of decoupaging around the welcome so three very substantial little shelf sitters I picked up a few other little items like these tea lights. I usually buy them from Target, but I want to give the ones from the Dollar Tree a try as well. I thought this was very interesting. It's a pencil box. Now, you can open up one side and you can see that you can put space to put your pens and pencils. Looks like you could put paper clips in there as well and flip it over and then you have another section and both sections are separated and you know what? Very decoupageable. Love that. I'm going to give you a quick look at some of Vippy's newest Halloween napkins. I mean, they have many, many more, but these are the ones that just went on, and some are available in sets. Okay, it's bonus DIY time, and I'm going to use a couple pieces of bisque I got from the Dollar Tree, this very spooky napkin I got from Vippy's Designs, and one of their wood coasters. I have some beads I'm going to use, some paint, and I'm also going to use Mod Podge, of course, and we're going to create a really pretty DIY decor. These are some of my favorite things I use in almost all of my videos. You will see them on my table, and I want to show you really quick. I'm going to be using them in this video as well. I'm going to start with the little finger sander. That little piece of sandpaper can be replaced once it gets worn out. Mod Podge, I buy big containers, put them in small containers, but remember you can always buy the little bottles at the Dollar Tree if you want. White linen chalky paint by Rust-Oleum is my favorite. I buy in big containers and I put them into little containers. My craft iron of choice is Cricut. I've been using it for three years. I absolutely love it. No problems. I love the Shore Bonders and I just bought this one because it has a skinny stream of hot glue. This is my newest love, okay? It's a little pouncer and it's got a little sponge that can be replaced. They can be washed as well so you can use them for a few times. Um, this I asked my crafting friends. I need a good little scissor and this is what my crafting friends recommended. Now, I always provide the links for these items. If you want to purchase them, you could purchase through these links and then I make a little commission. But look, I know we're all trying to save money. So I always say when these are also on sale, I also get my napkins from Vippy's Designs and I love their wood products as well. Okay, so think about using my links and let's get started. 
Here is the wood coaster I got from Dippy's Designs, and I'm going to start by giving it a coat of white linen chalky paint, and that's by Rust-Oleum. I'm going to use a brush to apply. I'm not going to be using a sponge. Now, I'm going to give it only one coat of the white paint because the wood is so light in color. I'm not going to need to use more than one coat. I like to use white paint when I have a napkin that has a white background, like that skull napkin I showed you in the beginning. Okay, oops, <laughs> let's just put that off to the side to dry. Now that the white paint is dry, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do a paint on that other side called Lilac Mist. It's by Apple Barrel and I found a lot of Apple Barrel colors at Walmart. I'm just going to squirt the paint right on and I'm using my brush to apply the paint. And this paint, it's kind of sheer, so normally I think I would do two coats, but this is the back. You're really not going to see it, but I decided to finish it. Now, is that something you do if you're doing maybe a sign and you're really not going to see the other side? Do you finish it off with a coat of paint or something else? All right, I'm only going to need one square of this napkin, so I'm going to cut it away from the other three. I'm using this awesome scissor. This scissor was recommended to me by my crafting friends, and I did put the purchase link down there in the description box. Okay, I'm going to put those other three aside, and I'm going to put the safety cover on the scissor. I love that. It really does make it safer to keep in your drawers and you don't stab yourself. All right, I have to separate the plies, because remember, with decoupage, we only use the top printed ply. I'm just going to put a little bit of Mod Podge. Well, I need a little bit more up in the corner, pinch my fingers, and I'm going to remove that top ply very, very easily. And it looks to me like there were two plies behind the printed one. All right, it's nice and sheer now, and we're ready to Mod Podge it onto the square coaster. I'm now ready to apply the Mod Podge. That's what's in this container, but remember, you can get the small containers in the Dollar Tree. I just buy big containers, and it's just easier for me to put them into a smaller container. Now, I'm using a brush, and a little tip is, when I apply Mod Podge, I cover the entire surface. I try not to leave any little spaces. I pay a lot of attention to the edges. Now I'm going to apply the napkin and I want you to notice something if you haven't noticed uh, yet. I'm not waiting for the glue to dry. I'm actually showing you another quicker way that you can put the napkin on while the glue is still wet. And yes, I am going to be using my iron as well. Right now, I'm going to take a piece of plastic. It's like a plastic bag and I have a wadded up piece of napkin and I'm just gonna go over it and smooth the whole napkin. I want to hold it up and show you that there are no wrinkles. By putting that plastic bag on top and rubbing it with a piece of wadded up napkin, it really makes it smooth. Let's let that dry. Now that this is dry, I'm ready to remove that excess napkin hanging off the edge. And I'm going to be using my finger sander. That little piece of sandpaper can be replaced once it gets worn out. I'm just going to be doing a downward stroke and I'm going to go all the way around. And look how easily that little sander removes the edge. And so clean and so fast. It really looks good. I can't recommend it. And it's very inexpensive, that little sander. See, there's my extra napkin. All right, so I am going to use my iron. Um, here it is. It's a Cricut iron. That's the setting. I'm going to the highest setting, which is the hottest. It's orange. It's not ready to use until it turns green. All right, did I fake you out there and I wasn't going to use the iron? <laughs> I'm putting a piece of baking parchment on top. That is going to protect the napkin and it definitely protects your iron. So once the iron turns green, there you go. Then you know that your little Cricut iron is ready to go. And I'm just going to go over and I'm going to make sure that napkin is well adhered. Here's a little safety tip. Whenever you do the iron-on method, always give it some time to cool before you remove the baking parchment. I want to hold this up and show you. This looks so good. I mean, it looks like somebody did this with pen and ink. I'm so excited to share this next step with you, and it's how I'm adding color onto this. Now, this is from another video. I'm using a coaster square as well. Now, I want to show you. You see that yellow? That's not paint. I did that with the stamp pad. I love how it came out. That little pouncer made it so easy to do. I'm going to do something very similar with this skull. 
If you want to see that, I've got the link below and you can learn how I use the stamp pads with that as well. Now, I always like working on a paper plate, but you know, just like when we did rubber stamping, you could always test it on something white before you actually started your project. And I am using Sweet Plump, and that's a Memento stamp pad. I'm going to put on the little sponge. It holds on. It's like Velcro. And by the way, you can wash them and you can use them over and over again. I would say at least four or five times. Now I'm testing the ink and now I'm going to start to go around the skull. And as I do it, I'm kind of overlapping too. I'm not sure I'm really liking those circles, but I'm able to blend those out. I want you to see how good this is coming out. I love it. Now I'm going to go around and do the whole edge. All right, I finished up the edge and now I want to do the flowers. I'm going to do the flowers in the same way. I'm going to use my little sponge pouncer and I did put a new sponge on and I'm going to test it. And now I'm going to start to go right on top of the flowers. I'm going to hold it up and show you how subtle that is, but it looks so good. How do you like this? Do you think this is something you want to try? Because I tell you, I'm loving it. I'm going to hold it up because I want you to get another look at how pretty that pink is, especially up against that purple. And the stamp head is by a company called Memento, and the color is Angel Pink. Now I want to add a little bit of green. So I'm going to, you can see the leaves are in there, and I think we need another color to kind of break things up. So I am going to do the leaves in green, and I'm going to use another stamp pad. I'm using Bamboo Leaves by Memento. This time, I'm not using the sponge. I'm going to use a brush. Wait till you see this. This is such a great, subtle way to add some color to your decoupage projects. I almost said stamping projects because I used to do a lot of stamping. But no, this is a decoupage project. And I want to hold this up so that you can see this little bit of green really makes a difference. I want to hold it up. And I want you to note, look how sheer that color is. All right, I'm done adding all the colors so you can see the green and the pink. I love it. It's so subtle. Um, before I go any further, I just want to remind you, these sponge pouncers, you get a whole ton of them, but you can wash them and use them again like three or four times. All right, using the stamp pads, these mementos, I want to say it's almost genius. I, I did a lot of stamping. That's why I say that. But the color, you can see it, but it, it's so sheer you can still see the lines in the napkin. So that black, if you use paint, all of those lines, you wouldn't see them. It would just look like all of these globs, but by using the stamp pads, we were able to add color. So are you wondering what I'm going to be doing with this yet? There's my little piece of bisque from the Dollar Tree. All right, the next step is I'm going to add these pink beads into each one of the corners. I'm creating a riser. You know, risers are so popular right now. So I love the idea of doing it with this as well. And you know what? This is not a coaster, but I was thinking, you know what? It could be a coaster, but this is not going to be a coaster. So I'm using my Sure Bonder glue gun and I am putting a little bit of glue in each of the corners. And then I'm going to put a bead on top, just like that. All right, I'm making sure the beads are well adhered. I'm going to flip it over so that you can see. Well, you really can't see the beads from that angle, um, but I can, and I'm not really sure about where I put them. Well, I didn't like where the beads were, so I did go ahead and remove them, and I pushed them inside a little bit more so you really can't see them. I did like the way that looks better. They were pretty easy to remove. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to protect it. So I want to put matte Mod Podge on top. I'm going to use that as a sealant. My only dilemma was, is the Mod Podge going to make the stamp head ink run? All right, this is a great big tip. I'm taking the wet Mod Podge, I'm going over it, I'm doing it on my paper plate. It's a great way to test it instead of doing it on your project first. You definitely will get a better idea that way. Very, very big tip. So I'm going to take the Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge, and since this is going to stay inside, um, it's going to be fine for me to use as a sealant. So I'm going to go over the whole thing. I want to hold it up so you can see. Now, the Mod Podge I'm using is matte, and I know you might be looking at it and saying, eh, Joan, that looks kind of shiny to me. That's 
that's okay. When it dries, it's not going to be shiny. And I like a matte finish because the bisque is matte. All right, I want to hold it up because I want you to take a look into the eyes of the skull. Well, not in a scary way. And I want you to see that it is white, but once this dries, you're not going to see that white. It's going to dry clear. All right, let's put that off to dry. Okay, let's have a look at this fun project. I added around the border that I got from the Dollar Tree. It came inside a sticker pack. They have packs of stickers that have like rays and they look like metal. They have lots of different ones, so check them out. I love how this came out. The technique using the stamp pads for the pink, for the purple, for the green, so sheer, but did such a beautiful job. I'm really hoping you're going to try this. I like how I mixed it up with some of the things from the Dollar Tree, those little skeletons and these bisque little, what did we decide to call them? I love how it looks on this riser. I also thought, oh, it'd be a cute idea maybe to put some jewelry on. I went ahead and did a different riser using a different napkin. So this one is not so, oh, I don't know, scary, but it's still fun. You can still put some of your, what are we calling these bisques? I love them. Whatever they are, I absolutely love them. So now there's two different ones that you can try. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe and follow me on YouTube, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Make sure you go over to my Facebook page as well, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Follow me there. I'm always adding lots of stuff. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you soon.